Here Thomas goes, changing his mind on whey protein now. What's next? Is he gonna change his mind on drinking water? Look, I haven't changed my mind. I've opened my eyes to a particular utilization of whey protein that I didn't really think about before. I've always been a whey protein isolate guy. What that means is I prefer the whey protein that is pure, unadulterated whey protein isolate. If you look on a label, you'll see whey protein isolate. It means the protein has been isolated from the whey and you're getting pure protein. I am still hands down a fan of that for getting my protein in. But I really used to keep whey protein concentrate at like arm's length. So I kept the distance because it was cheaper and I felt like it was cutting corners and you were getting some of the lactose in it and you were getting some of the milk solids that maybe weren't so good. So I was a little bit bearish when it came down to the whey protein concentrate. But recently I've realized that there's compounds in whey protein concentrate that make it very, very good for particular aspects of recovery and particular aspects of just uh, possibly even immune system activity. Really beneficial stuff. And we're gonna break that down and when to use it strategically because I wanna let it be known that my go-to source is still whey protein isolate, but I think there is a very practical application for whey protein concentrate. So you will find it in my cabinets now. Let's break this all down. And after today's video, I put a link down below for seed Symbiotic, that is a 25% off discount link. Now what you're gonna learn in this video is how important aspects of our digestion are. And one of the things that obviously comes top of mind when you think digestion is also going to be a probiotic. Most probiotics out there are complete trash, candidly. They don't even survive getting through your stomach acid. But seed is interesting because it has a symbiotic, which is a capsule inside of a capsule and a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. So that link down below saves you 25% off. I really do think you'll notice a difference within a week of taking this stuff. It's something that I notice within a couple of days. And if I go off of it, I notice it as well. So especially if you're changing your dietary habits and you need to add something in to kind of support the fact that you're changing the whole ecosystem of your gut, hands down, that's the best time to add in a probiotic, or in this case, a symbiotic. So that link down below saves you 25%. I highly recommend you check them out after this video. So whey protein concentrate contains all the aspects of milk. And well, not all the aspects obviously, but it contains a lot more of the components, right? And on some ways that's not as good, but in some ways it's really good. Now, I used to not like it because I didn't like the idea of slowing down the digestion. I didn't like the idea of other things being in there. But as I've evolved in my way of thinking, I'm like, okay, the closer that we can get to a whole food, the better. So looking at a whey protein concentrate as like a meal replacement is a little bit better than looking at whey protein isolate as a meal replacement. So as this video goes on and I share the details, I'm gonna tell you when to use isolate versus concentrate. But the main reason I've changed my mind on concentrate is one simple type of protein in it, and it is called lactoferrin. It is a specific, somewhat indigestible protein, okay? And what's so unique about it, and I'm gonna share the literature, is that it can bind to iron and have a tremendous antioxidant ability, but also a tremendous uh, antibacterial effect. It's unreal. So let's get into the first body of research. There was a study published in Molecules, and they went so far as literally calling lactoferrin a quote unquote miracle molecule. So it's in mammal milk in general, but you're gonna find it in high concentrations of whey protein concentrate or colostrum. What we're seeing now is that organs in our body produce lactoferrin, when these organs are potentially exposed to external threats. They are almost a defense protein, and we'll kind of explain why this works, but when you ingest it, it goes into your stomach, goes into your small intestine, it's partially digested, goes into your lymphatic system, and then goes into circulation, and one of the key things that it does is it counterbalances your iron levels. And I know what you're thinking, this is gonna get complicated. We could make this very complicated because iron and ferric state and ferrous state iron and transferritin, it is a complicated discussion. But the simple thing to know for the sake of this video is that when iron levels are too high, iron feeds oxygen. And oxygen, although it is good and obviously very important, too much oxygen is, guess what? Oxidative. Have you heard of oxidative stress before? When you are exposed to too much oxygen, things become oxidized. Iron, if you leave a piece of iron out in the elements exposed to oxygen, it's going to rust and it's going to oxidize. Same thing does happen in your body. Lactoferrin binds 
to iron. And in essence, it can actually increase your iron levels in the way that you want them. You have bound iron, iron that's like bound up, that's causing problems, but not really usable. And you have unbound iron, which is the iron that your body actually uses. Lactoferrin kind of fixes this ratio. As a matter of fact, there was a study published in Nutrients that gave subjects either a lactoferrin supplement, and again, you could get this from whey protein concentrate, or gave them a direct iron supplement. They found that the lactoferrin increased serum iron levels more than the actual iron supplement itself. It also increased ferritin. It also increased red blood cell formation more than iron and increased hemoglobin more than iron. So there's a performance aspect here too. There's a performance where you're increasing red blood cell count with lactoferrin. But what's interesting is it decreased what is called fractional iron absorption. So it actually decreased what on the surface looks like iron absorption and also decreased inflammation. In the grand scheme of things, what this nonsense really means is there seemed to be a reduction in inflammation that allowed for the proper unbinding and utilization of iron in the body, not just a willy-nilly absorption of all iron. Pathogens and bad things in our body will feed on excess iron. Okay, they feed on iron. It's why if you get sick, iron levels sometimes drop because pathogens will feed on iron. It's one of the indicators when you look at lab work. So when you can sort of starve the pathogens from iron, there is a positive benefit. Additionally, lactoferrin can stop what is called the quote unquote oxygen explosion in a neutrophil. Now, this isn't all just related to getting sick. This is directly related to our recovery and how we feel too, because our immune system activity definitely plays a role in our recovery in the gym too. So with this, you're reducing the amount of oxidative stress, which directly, and I mean directly impedes your recovery, potentially affects your soreness, your fatigue, your ability to sleep, all of this stuff. So to come back to this study that was published in Molecules, what they have found is that lactoferrin binds to iron hundreds times more than transferritin, which is the normal iron binder. Okay, so it is a huge iron binder. And ordinarily, iron will donate its electrons to oxygen. And I know this sounds so complicated, but I have to explain it this way, otherwise it makes zero sense. When iron donates an electron to oxygen, it causes that oxygen molecule to become so chaotic that it bounces around and oxidizes things that it touches. So I want you to imagine your body for a second like a ping pong machine or like a, a pinball machine, okay? And you have this ball that's going boing, 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 and it's signaling off all the lights and all the buzzers and all the cool stuff. Cool in a pinball machine, not flipping cool in your body when you're just triggering oxidative damage and stress everywhere. This impedes your recovery, impedes your mental health, impedes your sleep. Everything you could virtually think of that is bad, it's probably going to start a cascade of. Now, I wanna share with you when to use whey protein isolate versus when to use concentrate. Immediately after a workout or immediately after a fast or on an empty stomach, I believe whey protein isolate to be better. Whey protein isolate is going to give you a stronger signal for muscle protein synthesis simply because it absorbs fast. Whey protein isolate is very insulinogenic. Sounds bad, but protein spikes your insulin. It's a fine thing because if it didn't do that, you would never absorb the protein into your muscle. So you want it to spike your insulin. The faster a protein absorbs, the higher the insulin spike so that that protein can get into the muscle where it needs to go. So when you are quote unquote desperate for protein right after a workout or right at the end of a fast or your first meal of the day, I am very bullish on a whey protein isolate. If you are taking a protein shake or something along with a meal to try to get some extra protein in, I do this often, where maybe I'm in a little bit of a rush, um, I have a small amount of protein available in terms of meat and fruit and stuff like that, so I, I have this meal, right? But I'm like, shoot, I do need like another 20 or 30 grams of protein with this meal to really feel like I'm getting enough. So I'll have a protein shake along with it as sort of a protein meal replacement alongside a meal. At this point, I wouldn't really want to spike my insulin as high as I could with uh, whey protein isolate. I don't think it would be detrimental to, but like, why would I, if I have the option at this point, to get more well-rounded nutrition? Additionally, 
whey protein concentrate is more like a whole food, whereas whey protein isolate is much more in the supplement category. They're both supplements, don't get me wrong. But the cool thing is, is that whey protein concentrate is very inexpensive compared to isolate because there's a lot less filtration. There's less waste because you're getting a lot of the milk solids and stuff that have the lactoferrin and the good beneficial stuff. Whereas isolate, they filter it through and just give you the protein. Now, additionally, if you feel like you're maybe run down, I have to be careful with how I word this because YouTube doesn't always like me talking about this stuff, but if you feel like you might be coming down with something, that is a good time to potentially increase your whey protein concentrate consumption. Or if you're extra fatigued and you're just concerned, because that, again, counterbalancing of iron may be what you need. So one of the things that it can do, which is wild, is lactoferrin has been demonstrated at least mechanistically to disrupt carbohydrate feeding from the bacteria. So bacteria in our gut and pathogenically will a lot of times feed on carbohydrates. Doesn't mean carbohydrates are bad, it's just how it is. But lactoferrin seems to impede that action a little bit, so they don't feed on the carbohydrates as much, so potentially less I don't know, proliferation. Also, lactoferrin seems to break down the shell of a uh, gram-negative bacteria, of a bad bacteria. And when it does this, it's able to get broken down and ultimately killed and excreted a little bit easier. Obviously a very good thing. There's also some interesting evidence on gene expression, how it can kind of elevate the proper uh, immune response or recovery response at certain times. But that is all very early research. I'm sure it's promising because the bottom line is this. We're designed to be eating food in its whole form. And there is something called the food matrix, right? If I consume a big, beautiful glass of milk that is like unadulterated and I just go to a farm and I get it straight from the cow, there is a lot of benefit there. Same with like kefir, right? It's got all the calcium, all the things at the right ratios that nature intended. Same thing if I dive into a big tomahawk steak. It's everything the way nature intended it to be. The more that I filter this and isolate things, the less I get that food matrix. Isolation of nutrients is good if you really know what you're doing and understand the timing. But generally speaking, you're probably seeing this consensus online, right? We probably just come right back to eating as close to the earth as possible, eating whole foods, eating a wide variety of nutrients, not alienating and demonizing things, and letting our body just get what it needs as a full spectrum. But as performance-minded people, we have protein needs, we have supplementation needs, we have de uh, specific deficiencies and needs, and that's where it's okay to fill those gaps. So the bottom line, protein isolate for supplementation, whey protein concentrate for recovery, for meal replacement, for overall potential immune support, that is where we're headed. I'll see you tomorrow.